So I have decided to leave GoodNotes and use OneNote for my digital planning. And in this video, I'll tell you why. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I know this video might be a little confusing for some, especially since in my previous video, I reviewed my digital planner for 2024 in the GoodNotes app. In my personal life, I'm heavy in the Apple ecosystem. I have Apple everything. But in my work life, I've been team Windows since the beginning of my career. For my work planner this year, I decided to use Microsoft OneNote as my planning system. Y'all, I went to YouTube University to figure out how to build the perfect work planner for everything I needed. Let me give you a little background. So I work full time from home as a data analyst in healthcare. My job consists of running a lot of reports that contain a lot of HIPAA protected data. And with that, there's only so much planning or even note taking that I could do on my iPad. Using OneNote, not only can I document everything work related in my planner, I can also set reminders for myself through Outlook. Those reminders work like the Apple and Google Calendar links in this year's digital planner. OneNote even has the quick notes option like you can use on your iPad. So I don't think I'm missing anything from my digital planning on my iPad using GoodNotes by switching to OneNote. Now back when I worked in the office, it was easy for me to write down my notes on a notebook or in my physical planner because I could just lock those up at the end of the day. But when I came to work from home, the game completely changed. With the sensitive data that I use on a daily basis, it just works best to keep all the information that I use on their computer. And then at the end of the day, when I log off and lock the computer, everything is secure on their network. Since I do work in healthcare, I can't record a planner walkthrough on my work computer, but what I have done is recreated my work notebook in OneNote using my MacBook so I can show you how I plan on using it. Let's get into it. Let me go ahead and give you a disclaimer here. OneNote in iOS looks completely different than OneNote in Windows, but it's similar enough I can show you how I set this planner up. In Windows, my inbox is a section and the dividers are subsections. They would be across the top of the window. So you wouldn't see this as a drop down up under inbox in Windows. The first page of my planner is a dashboard and this first section is an inbox and I'm going to use this as a catch all to write down anything quickly that I don't have time to put in the section of my planner, but I still need to jot it down to move later. And then you have my weekly reset routine down at the bottom and I have reset my workspace, review current weekly plan, update pending tasks, check my emails, set up for my next week's planner and update my audit checklist. After the dashboard, I have a section for each month set up. I only did January and February for this demo one, but each one of the months has its own weekly checklist in the month. So at the top of it, you have your weekly reminders. Then it goes into a running checklist for the rest of the weeks of the month. After the monthly template, I created a weekly planner. In the weekly planner, you have your days broken down and you can write your task in for each one of the days. Then I have an area for any of my projects that I currently have that I can write any action items that I have for those. And then this area of responsibilities, I saw this while I was looking up how to set up this OneNote planner. And this is an area where you just write your running, like your maintenance tasks. So I put in here my trainings because I have trainings that are due either monthly, quarterly or yearly, but I want to make sure that I stay on top of those trainings because not only do they send an email to me when I miss my trainings, they also send it to my supervisor. And that's one of the areas of my elements is that I stay on top of my training. Under that, I've added in this OVC is a committee that I'm responsible for. If I have any tasks that I need to complete for my committee or any assignments that have been given to us for our committee, I can jot those down here. And then at the bottom, this is just an other action area that I can write down any miscellaneous things that I have going on. Now for both of my monthly and weekly pages in Windows, I can set those up as my template so I can add those in whenever I need them. So if I have a week that I'm not going to plan in, I don't have to add that template, but I have it saved that I can just add in the template whenever I need it. Sort of like the save templates in the digital planner. They're in my they're in my library for me to pull from whenever I need them. My next section is my future log section. This is where I will keep a log of my future assignments. They're not quite due right now, but I know about them now. So I want to make sure that I have them written down so I can check in with this list monthly to make sure that I'm on top of my assignments for that month. And the last page in this section is my waiting on. I'm going to keep a running list of any items that I have sent out that I'm waiting on a response for, whether it be a report or an email that just needs a response from someone. 
I, every time I've sent something out, I'll write it down on this list. And then when I receive the response, I'll close it out. Now I'm going to go into my dividers and this is how you set those up. You see, when you add a new section, if you right click, it gives you new section or it gives you new section group. The divider section that you see that it doesn't have a tab, that's because that's a new section group. And then when you drop it down, there's a tab for each section that's in that group. So the first divider that I set up is for my self-assessment. And under this, I have a performance tracker. On this performance tracker, I'll keep up with the date that I complete the task, the quarter that it was completed in. I'll write down a short summary of what the task was, the requester for the task, a description of how I completed the task, the performance element on my appraisal that it touches, any feedback I received, and then I'll write down the results of the action I've taken. And once I've completed these, I'll mark it off as completed in that column. Under my performance tracker, I just included a section to write down any notes that I have about my self-assessment. The next tab is my audits tab, and here I'll write down any notes I have on the actual audits I complete or any of the notes that I have for the SOPs which are the standard operating procedures for my audits. So I have my meeting section and this first page is my monthly check-in, which is my one-on-one -on -one meeting with my supervisor. Here I'll keep a list of anything that I wanna discuss with her during our one-on-one -on -one and also anything that we talked about. Sometimes I get assignments or things that she wants me to work on during that meeting and I'll jot those down here so I can remember to touch those before the end of the year. And I also have a section here set up for our weekly team meeting, same thing. Anything that we talk about during our meeting, any updates that we received, I'll write those in this area and also any assignments that we received during those meetings. Now I've set my next section up for my projects. The first page in here is for action items and it's just a running list of anything that needs to be done for the project. With my committee, I have a members list. So on my members list, I've written down everyone who's a committee member and I'll update this list as people come and they go. And then I have meeting agenda items. So this is anything that I have that happens during the month that I need to add to my meeting agenda for the next month. I can keep a running list of those. This next section is for my reports and in here I have a monthly running list of any reports that I have due. One thing I forgot to show you is that these little boxes are to-do boxes. So once I've completed the task, I can check the box off and I know that it's been completed. And the last section I set up for my resources. Here I can add any information that I need to reference to do my job, like the email templates that I need to send out when I send out my report and my quality checklist. These are quality checks that I need to complete each quarter. And this is where I would set up reminders in Outlook to remind me of when I needed to complete my quality checks. All right, y'all, that's my work planner for this year. And I'm still in the process of learning more about OneNote. So if you are currently using OneNote and you have any tips or tricks that you would like to share, please drop them in the comments below. And if you are in the same situation that I'm in and you work using Windows system and you would like to know step by step how I set this planner up, let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to try to borrow a Windows computer or show you on my Mac how I set this up. All right, y'all. Till next time. <music>